morning. It's good to see you again this week on Monday, May 8th. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, Illinois. And I'm so pleased to be with you again this Monday morning. And I want to talk to you about what does that mean for you? I can't answer that. You have to answer that yourself, but I can tell you what it means for me. I wake up every morning to a life that I have created, as we all do. We create the lives that we have, and I'm really pleased with the life I've created. I'm married to someone I deeply care about and love and care about. I have a child that I deeply love and care about. I live in a community of folks that I deeply love and care about, and I serve two churches that, again, I deeply love and care about. So that is a great thing to wake up to every single day. I get to use the gifts that I love to use. I was called into ministry. I fought it at first, resisted it for a while, and I'm glad that I lost that battle, and here I am, and for 20-some years now, I've been in ministry in this location. And I love it. I love the work that I do, and I love the people with whom I get to do it. I have opportunities beyond the church to use these gifts to help people, to help uh, a nursing college. I speak to nursing students sometime to give them inspiration on managing anxiety and staying grounded in a really difficult and stressful occupation. I get to work with some nonprofits in the area, other churches and other nonprofits to help them build their leadership teams. I get to do a lot of the things that I want to do. And I'm so happy. I really love the job I have. Now, there are, you know, drawbacks. There are some things in life that I would change, of course, but none of them can compare to the good blessings that I have in this life. And I take the time every day to acknowledge that. Maybe not as well as I could, and I'm working on that to do that more and more. But I love this life that I have. It's the good life for me. And there's always more possibilities. There are challenges. And I try to push myself into learning new things, into trying new things, and doing new things to keep my mind sharp, my body healthy, and to keep life interesting. That, again, is another part of living the good life for me. I like to be challenged. I like to try new things. I like to be exposed to new ideas and new people. So I have those things in place, and it's fun. A big part of the good life for me is obviously my faith. And I invite you to think about what the good life looks like for you. What are the things in your life that you have created? And again, we create the lives that we have. What is it that you love about the life you have created? What is it that you can identify that really stands out, that gives you joy and purpose, that guides you each day, that you can say, thank you, thank you, God, for that life. And then, what do you want to build upon? What do you want more of? What do you want less of? And here's the thing, often in, in my profession, people will come to me with problems and they don't need my advice. Usually, almost always, people know themselves what they want or what they need. But sometimes they just need a space that is safe and sacred so that they can talk all that through. So that's what I offer. I offer people a safe space to talk things through. If they want my advice, I'll offer it, but you know, what's that worth? I don't know. But anyway, talk through the things in your life. And the, one of those things that I ask always in these situations when someone comes to talk is, what is it that you want? What do you want? What do you want in this life? Have you really stopped to think about that? Have you really ever stopped to just say, hmm, in big things and in little things, what is it that you want? It's a powerful question. It's so simple, but the best things in life usually are really simple. And it's a, one, it's a question worth asking and worth sitting with. So I ask you, what do you want? What do you want in life? And then in, in this particular struggle that you're in, 
or the season that you're going through, what is it that you want? What is it that you need in the struggle in this season? What is it that you really, really want or need? How can it be available to you? Is it already available to you and you just need to seize upon it? Or do you need to do some things to make it available to you? Those are some powerful things to consider. And a lot of times they're right in front of us. A lot of times we just need to have a bit of a different mindset or a bit of a different outlook and we can seize upon those things that we really need because they're usually not, sometimes they are, but they're usually not earth shattering things. They're usually simple, wise things that are within our reach. So I invite you to consider those things and then write down a few things that outline what the good life is for you. And, you know, build upon it, build more of that, adapt a mindset that will help you to move toward that, deal with any emotions that keep you from grabbing onto that, remove any obstacles that, that are in the way of you finding that. And, you know, give yourself permission to have it. That's a biggie right there. A lot of us keep sabotaging ourselves. One of the greatest mysteries of humankind, in my mind, is the many, many ways that we actively act against our own self-interests. Have you ever thought about that? I do it all the time. I see people do it all the time. It's a kind of a part of being human is we do things that actively oppose our best interests. It's funny, isn't it? But it's also true. We, when it comes to diet and physical exercise, how many times do we sabotage ourselves there? With managing finances, another easy way to sabotage ourselves. With, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. There are so many ways that we self-sabotage and a lot of it has to do with our mindsets. It's really not, a sophisticated problem it's like those things in life they're simple but they're not easy so I invite you this week to latch on to the simple and though it may not be easy it is simple and then build on it outline what you need to do identify what the good life is for you and then pursue it. Grab on with both hands. Life is short. Take this time to appreciate what you have and build what you want. Don't spend time building a life that you don't want because the life you have is a life that you have created for yourself. The choices that we make bring about the realities that we exist each day. And if you have a life that you don't want, change up what you're doing. Build a different life. But it starts with understanding yourself and then controlling yourself. It always comes back to self-awareness and self-regulation, self-awareness, self-control. Know who you are and then control what you can control and live the good life. That's it. That's what I have for you this week. I want you to wake up each day with joy in your heart, mind, soul, and spirit to be thankful for the life you've built and look forward to what each day may bring for you. And at the end of each day, to give thanks for it. All right, friends, that's it. I'm Melissa Ebkin, pastor of the Iliopolis Nyanic Christian Churches, founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.